Hey folks, welcome to Open Analysis Live, or rather a Twitch clip from our OA Labs Live channel on Twitch, which you should go check out, We're probably live right now. Okay, so um, I'm planning to move to, to a US company, and on what standard should I choose companies to apply for? What would be a good company to start a career? Ooh, I don't know. I don't know if I'm the right, uh, uh, if I'm the right one to ask about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I think uh, you can tell a lot about a company um, from, I guess that there's like a couple things you can keep in mind, but they're not always, you know, it's hard to give advice like this because it depends on where you are in your career. If you're just starting your career, then just take any job, you know, just, just take a job so you get your foot in the door. Um, it doesn't really matter too much. It's not like you're married to your job, but if you're looking, you know, you have some experience. Hey, what's going on? Cool. Cool bacon man. <laughs> yeah, so if uh, if you get to choose, um, you know, you can be a little choosy, you have some experience, uh, you're a good reverse engineer and you get to choose your company. Uh, a couple things that I would uh, look out for personally. So it's just my own personal opinion. Number one is who do they hire? You know, are there people on the team that you, you like, people that you know? Do you know their work? Do they allow those people to like, commit to open source projects or publish, you know, blog posts, that kind of stuff. Is that, that's something that I would look for. Cause I, I think to me, that's important um, that a company supports that kind of stuff. And also it tells you that you, the people that you're going to work with are going to be smart and you're going to be able to learn from them, which again, to me, that's an important thing to look for. Um, another thing is to look at how they treat you. So, uh, it's it's kind of hard to get a that's all right rattle. <laughs> it's kind of hard to get a um, a good idea of how you're going to be treated in such a short time because people can obviously they have their it's like you know a interview is like a date everyone has their best face on right but you can look at the interview process and how they actually treat you do they treat you like uh, a replaceable compute unit are they giving you um, tests that they would give to a machine or are they treating you like a human being? Are they asking you things where they actually care about your answers, where they understand there's some nuance? You know, that, that, that tells a lot about a company. Um, is the person interviewing you, uh, do they not know what they're talking about? I, you know, that's a warning sign right there. Is, is the person you're talking to uh, interested in the work that you're doing and the stuff that you want to do? That's also important. You know, those are those are things that you look out for, but only if you're, only if you can choose where you want to work. Again, that's this is all very bad advice if you're just trying to get your foot in the door. If you're trying to get your foot in the door, just just take the job, just <laughs> jump through the hoops, take the job, and move move forward from there. <laughs> that's uh, you know, you don't get to be choosy if you're just trying to get your foot in the door. Um, yeah, and I think a lot of you have heard me rant about interviews before. Um, there's interviews where interview tactics where I just wouldn't, you know, I'll just end the interview <laughs> politely, but just end it because I know that it's not going to be a good place to work. Um, things like whiteboard interviews and all that kind of shit. Um, that's done in companies where you're generally not treated very well as, as an individual. You're treated like a, like a unit of work, not like an individual who's, who's going to have something to contribute to, to the overall company. Um, so anyway, that's that's my personal opinion on it. Um, you know, take it for what it's worth. I, I don't work for a company anymore. I work for myself. So, you know, that <laughs> it is what it is. But uh, but yeah, that's the what I would say. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, I, I mean, feel free to ask questions. We've we've had a lot of questions like this on the channel about like people who are just trying to get a job. You know, trying to get their foot in the door. Um, and uh, I'm always happy to answer them, but it, you know, you just have to keep in mind that I'm not, uh, I'm not you and I'm at a different point in my career. So I have a different perspective on things. Um, you know, it is what it is. Uh, I would probably try one of the established companies that have some sort of employee reviews publicly available. I mean, yeah, that, that kind of helps, but you really do want to, you know, the employee reviews, it's kind of hard to tell because you could end up on like a really shit team um, in a good company, right? That, that happens. Um, my favorite is when they give you a set of take home files to analyze and ask some specific questions. Yes, that is what I, I've, I've, uh, I've touted this on the stream and I will continue to 
I'll continue to say, if somebody gives you, if your interview is like a chat with someone to make sure that you vibe, and then the actual like skill testing part of it is a take home exam where you can do it in your own time that is realistic of what you're actually doing as opposed to like 21 questions uh, with 50 cent. If I fell off tomorrow, would you still love me? That's the company you want to work for because that company is hiring people who are going to have something to give to you as well as, as a coworker, um, right? It's, it's, it's not just like, is the interview process shitty? You have to think all the people that were hired went through that shitty interview process. So there's a good chance there's a bunch of people on that team that are that really suck, right? People who do well on like whiteboard interviews, you probably don't want to work with those people. I mean, there are exceptions, but like, you know, <laughs> you you what you really want is you want people who are able to do really amazing work, right? And with with no, they're not uh, salesmen. Pe people who can do 21 questions on a whiteboard are salesmen. Right, so they're gonna look, they're gonna present themselves well, but that's not necessarily who you want to work with or who you want on your team. You don't want a team full of salesmen, right? It's good to have one salesman, you know, if you want someone who's leading the team, that's good. You know, to convey your team's uh, ideas to external people, that's good. But the core of the team, you want people who are able to solve problems, and the only way to really test that, in my opinion, is to give someone some take home thing that reflects what they're actually gonna be doing on the job. My two cents on that. I had a mini job, job, reverse engineering related, where they hired me on the spot with no interview. That should have been a red flag. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, this is, uh, uh, I don't know, I'll just tell you guys this. So I, uh, I got the first full time reverse engineering job where I did reverse engineering all day, every day, like that's all I was doing. Uh, I got from Twitter, a Twitter DM. I thought it was a scam. <laughs> so like for real, it was a small company and they DM me many, many years ago. Uh, and they were like, we saw like, I posted a bunch of stuff and I'd like a GitHub. And they're like, we see your work. We know you're Canadian and we want to hire you. And I just replied with, what is this, a scam wall? <laughs> and then they were like, no, 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 please Google. Like they were like sending me DMs, like, please Google this, please. <laughs> we're very, we're very true. We're, we're actually a company. It was so funny. Um, yeah. And they, they flew me out to meet them and, uh, yeah, pretty much just hired me right on the spot. They were, I didn't have any, the interview was, I think just to make sure I wasn't crazy <laughs> to see what I look like in person. Um, but uh, they already knew who I was and what I, what I could do, and that they just wanted me on the team. And that was that was a really good experience. That was the first full time reverse engineering job uh, I did after like eight or nine years of working uh, corporate. <laughs> Starting a Twitter now, yeah. I mean, things are a little different, uh, a little different now, right? Uh, this was a long time ago. Um, the job I had after that, I had a take home. Uh, a take home test and that that ended up being like one of my my all-time favorite jobs of all like forever <laughs> that team was so fucking good my boss is so awesome um yeah and it was just like the interview was exactly what i explained it was just like a chat to make sure that i wasn't crazy <laughs> or wasn't a me like an asshole and then the rest of it was just a take home exam at some of the worst i ha also had horrible jobs too just to give you guys to balance it out i had a fucking insane job for like a fortune five <laughs> I, don't, I don't know I, I don't want to narrow it down anymore but it might have been even higher than fortune five uh but i don't want to i don't want to out that company um and that job interview was insane it was like a whiteboard interview with like crazy technical questions like they asked me like how does how did like stack stuff work for like python and stuff like that like shit that i just i was like i don't know how uh, any of this shit ever works um and then, and they hired me. They're like, this guy is gonna do great. He did so good on those like 21 questions. And then I got there and the people that were interviewing me, I mean, I'm sorry to say this, you guys know who you are. They were, they did not know the answers to the questions they were asking me. <laughs> like I got on the team and I was like, wait a minute, you guys were just like reading, like they had like a book where it was like, here's the question, here's the answer. But they had no, I don't think, 
anyway, this is pretty negative. Um, but based on an interview, I thought I was talking to like the original developers of Python. <laughs> people, who had, people who had actually written Python. <laughs> oh God. Anyway, yeah. So uh, I've I've seen I've seen both. <laughs> I've seen both sides of it. Oh God. Starting a Twitter account is a really good way to reach people in the industry. I I agree. Yeah. I think Twitter is obvious, obviously now with the bullshit culture war stuff, it's become uh, pretty revolting. But as long as you have a nice uh, word block list, you know, you don't have to look at it too much. It's still a good way to like get your ideas out and to, uh, and you can also DM people who are very famous, very smart people. You can DM them with questions and usually they'll answer, uh, which is very nice. I still like Twitter. I still think there's hope for it. <laughs> Uh, wait, they ask you how Python stack works for Python DevRel? <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to go too much more into the uh, in, into that interview um, because I think th th those people are around and I'm friends with some of them. But like they, uh, they'll know that I'm talking about them if I if I go into any more detail. It was not a Python development role. It was like a senior incident responder uh, role where I was, I was basically hired to do a lot of automation around the incident response process. Um, yeah, the, the question, there were other uh, very insane questions, but the, the Python ones were the most outrageous because once I joined the team, I realized these people don't program in Python. Like they, just, they were just asking like questions from like a question book. Oh man. You would never ask a question you couldn't answer in depth. Yeah. I mean, that's what I, that's what I thought. <laughs> I thought most normal people aren't going to ask questions they don't know the answer to. Oh man. Yo, what's going on, Red Team Rob? How you doing? Hey, I have another funny, uh, funny interview from way back. As I, uh, I'm just gonna go through and knock a few of these out here. Uh, way back in the day, when I was just a kid and I was trying to get a job as a software developer, um, I dropped out of university, and uh, I was trying to get out of. I was a contractor for the military, and I was trying to get out of that because that's not a there's not a lot of, there's lots of money, but there's not a lot of career progression if you do that. So I was trying to get into a, like a real software development shop where I could get mentorship and stuff and, and move my career forward. And I <laughs> interviewed at a place where they had, um, this is a lot, to put this in perspective, this is probably like, I don't know, like 15 years ago <laughs> or something like that. But um, the they, these guys, this is back when everyone thought Google was like the coolest company ever. And they had a book of like questions. You, I don't know if you guys remember this, but like it's like, uh, like brain teasers that Google asked their engineers to hire like the best engineers. They'd ask things like, uh, why is a manhole cover round and shit like that? Like just, just fucking outrageous shit. Anyway, they uh, they had a book of those questions that they were asking me, <laughs> and like I still remember, um, like I was just kind of laughing i mean you guys probably know get a sense of my personality I, i'm not that serious <laughs> and so i was just kind of laughing saying like these are these are ridiculous um and trying to like come up with the funniest like answers i could for them um and they were they kind of got it like they were kind of laughing too <laughs> they were like <laughs> you know they're like yeah this is kind of stupid we should probably stop doing this <laughs> and i ended up getting a, a job offer from them um, which, which is pretty cool, but they, uh, but they gave me a job offer for a much lower position than what I was, what I was applying for. <laughs> I think they, uh, they sensed I probably wasn't good for leadership <laughs> at that company. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, be yourself and, uh, you, you never know, you might, uh, you might end up, uh, coming across as an okay guy. Uh, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Go check our Twitch stream. We're probably live right now. And remember, until next time, keep exposing mechanics behind the malware. Stay curious. Bye, guys.